The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11150 in the name of Joan McAlpine on meal makers tackle malnutrition in frail older people. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Uh, I now call on Joan McAlpine to open the debate. Ms McAlpine, if you are ready, your seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I first came across Mealmakers when I attended the AGM of the charity Food Train in Dumfries this year. It is a project funded by the Scottish Government and the Rank Foundation and delivered by Food Train, and it is one of the best examples of a preventative care initiative that I have encountered in my time as an MSP. Essentially, meal makers means that the cook makes an extra portion of what they would normally cook for dinner and deliver it, delivers it to the diner's home nearby. It connects people in the same neighbourhood and strengthens communities as well as helping individuals. A great many people love to cook, but it's not much fun if you have nobody to appreciate the end results. Yet for every keen cook, there's an individual who would love a hot meal, but who cannot manage to cook. Mealmakers pair up the two, initially through a website, which has profiles of cooks and diners showing their interests and tastes in food. <coughs> the project is very much in the spirit of the parent charity. I have always been a great admirer of Food Train, and I am far from alone in that respect. The charity, which began in Dumfries and Galloway, but is now rolled out across Scotland, was founded on a very simple principle that many older people find it hard to shop, particularly as the local butcher, baker and greengrocer have closed and the nearest supermarket is only accessible by car. Food Train began by taking orders for shopping and then delivering the order via volunteers who would stay and unpack and chat, hence providing a point of contact for clients who were housebound and isolated. The idea of mealmakers grew out of conversations struck up during these deliveries. Quite a few of the older people who ordered messages simply didn't get around to cooking the food. A failure to cook is often a cause of malnutrition in the elderly, and Mealmakers addresses it very directly. You could say it facilitates a natural human instinct, which is neighbourliness. When I was growing up, people looked out for and shopped for elderly housebound neighbours. They often handed in soup, baking, or a cooked meal on occasion. And I remember my own grandmother, widowed in her 50s, cooking for others well into her 70s. However, due to social mobility and perhaps a modern reticence, we often don't know our neighbours and we hesitate to offer help lest it is rejected. And conversely, those who could do with a bit of help can be too shy to ask. Mealmakers overcomes this difficulty using social media and you can check out their site at www.mealmakers.org.uk or their very popular Facebook site. Of course, many of those who would benefit from a meal don't use the internet and they're recruited in more traditional ways through GPs, district nurses, social workers and leafleting and posters in local shops. And I should here give credit to the pupils of Harris Academy in Dundee who helped make the pilot there a very great success by leafleting their local area. It's a truly pan-Scottish project piloted in Dundee but coordinated from a hub in Springburn in Glasgow. When I visited that hub and talked to Emma Stewart and Danielle, the staff who I believe are in the gallery today, I got an even clearer picture of Mealmakers and its beneficial effects. To begin with, Mealmakers cooks have to go through a basic food hygiene course and are of course PVG checked for security. They are then linked up with a frail elderly person looking for someone to cook. The pair first speak on the phone to make sure that they get on well and they feel comfortable before going ahead with the arrangements. Some diners will insist on plain food like mince and tatties, and, others, uh, and that's what they get. And others are more adventurous and they're linked with more experimental cooks. Quite often, a friendship develops and the diner will stay for a chat. In Dundee, the pilot, a great many of the cooks were students keen to give something to the community through volunteering. And it was really heartening to hear about the cross-generational friendships being established through the simple act of cooking and delivering a meal. But maybe we shouldn't be surprised because food is a way of socialising for all of us and, and has been since the beginning of time, really. If we want to break ice, we break bread. Um, and that goes back several millennia. But there is, of course, a very serious benefit in some cases, illness, frailty and social isolation can cause malnutrition. 
On my visit to Springburn, I heard some dreadful stories, and one concerned a housebound bereaved man who had literally existed on jam, jam sandwiches until someone directed help his way. It's now almost 10 years since the Recipe for Life project was commissioned by the Scottish Government. This research aimed to find better ways to support older people in Scotland to eat well and found a number of social and psychological factors which had an impact on dietary intake. In particular, eating with others was an important way to ensure good nutrition, as was cooking for others. The research also found that having a good quality meal cooked by someone else encouraged the frail elderly to eat. Presiding officer, for a number of years now, elderly people admitted to hospital have been screened for signs of malnutrition, as indeed is the case in other parts of the UK. In one pan-UK research project that covers, covered the four years to 2011, 29% of the elderly admitted to hospital were found to be malnourished. But it varied uh, by country. England had the highest level of malnourishment at 30%. Scotland was lowest at 24%. Um, of course, it is good to be ahead, presiding officer, but I take little comfort from that one in four figure. And that's why I applaud this project in particular, along with the other work that Food Train does to feed those who, for complex health, psychological and social reasons cannot feed themselves. I wish mealmakers well in their forthcoming official launch on the 17th of December and I look forward to it reaching cooks and diners in every corner of our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I now call on Dr Elaine Murray to be followed by Dr Nanette Milne. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First of all, can I congratulate John McAlpin in securing the debate. Indeed, we've debated the work of Food Train in Parliament before, and it's very good to have another opportunity to highlight their work. Uh, it's a charity supporting older people, which started out in Dumfries and Galloway as a project identified by the Dumfries and Galloway Elderly Forum, uh, who spoke to their own members, but has now expanded its services to six local authority areas. The services provided by Food Train include the delivery of groceries, as John McAlpine said, to older people who have difficulty in doing the shopping. Food Train Extra provides help and support with a wide variety of household tasks uh, and supported in in independent living. Uh, Food Train Friends is a befriending service which may include tri trips out, home visits and phone calls. Uh, and there's also an outreach library service where by volunteers drop off and pick up books for people who are unable to use the library service due to poor health, disability, frailty or uh, poor mobility. So uh, Mealmakers is an expansion of that, and it's based on something called the Casserole Club, uh, which seems to have taken off ac across the uh, United Kingdom over the last couple of years. And there are now thousands of people, uh, across, volunteers across the country, getting involved. And as John McCarthy described, volunteer cooks prepare meals in their own homes, uh, often with an extra portion for an older person, uh, whom the Casserole Club refer to as diners, in the community who's, who is less able to cook a good nutritional meal for themselves. So it doesn't take any extra time or effort on behalf of the cook, uh, though many, in many clubs uh, the, the cook will uh, actually take the meal around to the diner uh, and spend some time with them or will actually invite the diner to come into their own home uh, to eat the meal. Uh, and indeed in the, their website there are many heartwarming stories of friendships developing uh, between the cooks and diners to the advantages of both. Now, many of us who have in the past cooked for larger families, my three children are all grown up and in their own homes, uh, it becomes quite, it's quite difficult to scale down to, to cooking for two people or for one people. So what tends to happen is there are additional portions in the freezer which uh, are to be eaten later at some time. And my husband always says, I'll eat those when you're in Parliament. Uh, and then he tries to identify what they are. In fact, one time he thought he was having chilli con carne. It turned out to be a, 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 some sort of plum uh, uh, crumble, which I think he found somewhat disappointing. But uh, uh, that, that what tends to happen, you know, is things that sit in the freezer and they end up being uh, thrown away. Uh, this Parliament has strongly supported the Zero Waste campaign, Love Food, Hate Waste, but it's the case that something like a billion pounds worth of food is thrown away every year, so far better uh, to share those with others who would need and appreciate a good meal. But as John McAlpine said, it's not only about nutrition, because in most cultures, the sharing of food is also a statement about caring and affection. We take pleasure in preparing food for people we care about, and that's why often for a person on their own, even if they are a good cook, it's quite difficult to prepare some good meal for yourself, but it's, it's more difficult to be 
motivated because we enjoy all, enjoy preparing food for other people in our family. We actually argue about who, Chris, who cooks a Christmas dinner because actually that sort of act of cooking a meal for uh, a family is, is very important to all of us. And we also enjoy food uh, cooked for us by family and friends. Our family and friends don't have to be master chef for us to really enjoy a meal. So that's also that side of it is also important because where friendships to develop between cook and diner, meal matters will provide not just that physical nourishment, but that social nourishment and that feeling of caring and affection and being included, which is also very important for mental health. So I think this is an excellent uh, initiative, and I look for I also look forward to it being rolled out across Scotland in the future. Many thanks. I now call on Dr. Nanette Milne to be followed by Sandra White. Uh, I'm also grateful to Joan McAlpine for lodging this motion and bringing it to the Chamber this afternoon. I just noticed today that I'm not actually a signatory to the motion, but that was an accidental omission because I do fully support what it says. I confess that until prefer preparing for the debate, I wasn't aware of food trade in Scotland, um, but I was interested to learn of its history, which, as we know, began in Dumfries in 1995, following a community survey of older people that found many of them struggling with their weekly grocery shopping. Uh, a partnership of local shops and volunteers was formed and Food Train began making deliveries of fresh groceries to older people in need with the help of local volunteers and shops. The scheme, as we know, expanded across Dumfries and Galloway, then into other parts of Scotland. Services offered include Food Train, a shopping delivery service, Food Train, extra help with household chores, Food Train, friends, a befriending service, and now Mealmakers, the subject of this afternoon's debate. Mealmakers is a new project currently being piloted in my own region in Dundee, which encourages people to cook an extra meal, which can be given to isolated older people living in their communities. It's aimed at reducing food poverty, improving diets and breaking down the barriers that lead to loneliness. And it, as we know, uses an online platform to connect volunteers with older people who might benefit from the initiative. I pay tribute to the Scottish Government and the Rank Foundation for providing £60,000 of funding, and I recognise the inspiration behind the scheme coming from the Casserole Club, which originated, I believe, in areas of South East England. The scheme should bring benefits beyond the nutritional goals it st strives to achieve. I was a great fan of the w WRVS Meals on Wheels service, which brought a hot meal to many elderly people living on their own once or twice a week, delivered to them and served by a volunteer. I don't actually know if this service still exists, but it was greatly appreciated by its recipients. Yes, indeed. Mr Simpson? The, the, the Meals on Wheels do, does still exist, but... There is a major problem in that, because of cost restrictions, many local authorities are now giving frozen meals which are microwavable. And although that may provide similar nutrition for those who can work a microwave, it has actually reduced what Joan McAlpine was referring to, which is it, 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 it increases social isolation. And I was in my speech going to ask the minister to take a very firm look at that whole area because Time it is not then. about food only. Dr. Milne. Thank you. I have to say Dr. Simpson has just stolen a chunk of my speech. But <laughs> um, as I say, I, I wasn't sure that if the service did exist for the very reasons that have been articulated. Um, for, I mean, the, the ready meal was very welcome because it delivered personally, bringing many an elderly person the, the regular human contact which was missing from their lives. And for some, it was the only time they saw people, out, from someone from outside their home, and it relieved the monotony of a lonely and isolated existence. And the replacement of these meals by these hot meals by frozen meals which should be delivered several at a time, whilst it does save money, meant the loss of that human contact, which to my mind, as it was uh, Dr. Simpson, was a retrograde step. I therefore think that meal makers will be a very welcome and valuable service to today's increasing population of older po people who face the isolation of being housebound and often without any outside contact beyond the NHS. And of course, it should, if successful, um, contribute to overcoming the very serious problem of malnutrition in our increasing the elderly population. Meals on Wheels not only benefited the recipient, but also the volunteer who delivered the meals. And I had a friend who used to deliver for WRVS, and she got immense pleasure from her conversations with her clients. And I've no doubt this will also be the case for those who get involved with meal makers. Indeed, I could see myself volunteering for this once I have more time on my hands. I'm sure there must be many people like myself who, when they cook, prepare more than the need for one meal and freeze what's left over for another occasion. Just last weekend I prepared a pork chop dish using 12 chops and the 10 left over after our meal are now in my freezer in packs of two and it would be no effort and very little expense for a couple of these chops to go to someone who because of frailty can't get to the shops and is no longer able to cook. I'd imagine the Dundee pilot to be a success and look forward to it being rolled out to the other local authorities 
where areas where the food train currently operates. Uh, if it proves itself, uh, I would like to see it rolled out right across Scotland, and I know several people in my own area who would almost certainly be interested in supporting it. It occurs to me, too, that such a scheme could possibly be attractive to young volunteers, for instance, teenage pupils learning how to cook at school. So much of the, 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 the food they cook nowadays is very appetising, and I'd, I'd imagine a number of pupils would be very interested in using their newfound skills uh, to improve the diets of older housebound people in their neighbourhood, helping to improve their nutrition and getting the benefit themselves of personal contact with someone from an earlier generation who could enlighten them about their lives, past and present. I'm quite excited to learn about the Meal Makers programme and how it develops, and I do hope that Joan McAlpine will keep us informed about its progress. So once again, thanks to the member for raising this subject in Parliament. Excellent. And I now call on Sandra White to be followed by Dr Richard Simpson. Thank you very much, President Officer. I thought perhaps you were going for a hat trick there and Dr Simpson could have came next day. I'm just playing Sandra White, MSP, but I am the convener of the cross-party group in older people age and ageing. And uh, the subject does come up uh, pretty often in our cross-party groups. And this morning was my first meeting at the uh, Equal Opportunities Committee where actually they had looked at uh, older people and the uh, discrepancies between other people in society. And this subject did come up in regards to uh, older men, so I'll, I'll touch on that uh, later on, uh, presiding officer. Can I congratulate my colleagues, uh, Joan McAlpine, for securing this debate, uh, Meal Makers, uh, with, which is, as Joan's motion says, an innovative new project, but also a very welcome and important one, which sets out to tackle a very real concern, and that's of malnutrition amongst our frail elderly people. Now, it's an issue which we may find hard to talk about or, or indeed even recognise in some aspects. Um, we, we know many elderly people, particularly those living on their own uh, with limited access to transport, social hubs uh, and this busy world that we live in. I think Joan had touched on that also uh, in the society. I mean, it includes family and friends. And sometimes it's very difficult with the busy lives that people lead to even go out to be able to visit their relatives or, or see their relatives. And for the elderly people uh, in the house, it's, it's difficult for them to get out and about and engage with the world around them. And uh, I do congratulate the original food train, and I know there's people here in the gallery from there, for recognising the issue of, first of all, isolation in older people, and obviously setting up the service in 1995, uh, along with volunteers and local shops. It's a real community issue and a real community hub. And they delivered fresh groceries, and then they went on to provide home support services, which uh, I was really concerned when I read that, I thought that was wonderful, uh, that if people are older, elderly, can't perhaps put up curtains or do simple jobs like that, they can call on this service. And that's something that makes, makes life a lot better for everyone concerns. And now they've moved on to enabling older people to enjoy healthy meals. Uh, you know, I know this is a pilot project, it's been mentioned before, which will run for two years, and at the moment is up and running in Dundee. But I would hope that it can be rolled out across Scotland, as others have said, and even perhaps be incorporated into existing projects, which I know we all have, in our constituencies uh, provided by other groups, which may not have went this extra mile or not been able to do that. Certainly, I know in my own area in Glasgow, Kelvin, we have many uh, you know, groups uh, who work with elderly people. Glasgow People's Welfare Association, for instance, uh, 60, 66 years, it's been running fantastic projects. Perhaps they would be able to be incorporated into that and maybe we'd know how to go about it. I'm not asking the ministers to give us a definitive answer today, but it's something that I think would be interesting to all the other the groups there. Uh, many older people live on their own. They lose interest in cooking. I certainly know when my mum lived on her own. Uh, it was the last thing she wanted to do was to make a meal for herself, always having used to uh, a large family and cooking for them. Uh, and sometimes they're simply not able to do this. And that brings me back to the subject we were discussing in the Equal Opportunities Committee uh, this morning, particularly in the case of older men who have, you know, would you say relied on? It's been part of the, you know, part of the culture for them that their wives would cook the meals, and they've never been able to cook a meal. And I remember one time one was phoned up, and basically it was one of these helplines which they thought it was over Christmas, and it was actually Silverline, and they assumed that they were phoning because they were lonely. They were actually phoning to find out. They gave a big long explanation. What they wanted to know was how did they cook a chicken? And this was at Christmas time. So there's many older men who haven't been used to looking 
looking after herself and obviously miss out on a good nutritional uh, meal. So thank you very much, uh, Joan, for bringing forward the, you know, this debate today. And I'm very pleased to have been able to speak in the debate. And I look forward to it, as what everyone else said, rolling out over Scotland. Thank you very much, President Officer. Thank you. I now call on Dr Simpson, to, after which we move the closing speech from thank the Minister. You. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I welcome the opportunity to speak in this debate and congratulate Joan McAlpine on securing the chamber time. And can I begin by correcting an omission from the debate the other day by welcoming the Minister Maureen Watt to her new position. And I do hope that she will use her influence and the fact that she's previous experience as a minister to press forward on the issues that Joan McAlpine has raised in terms of developing social capital assets that seek inclusion of older people, because I think that that's really important. Uh, as Joan, said, Joan McAlpine said, 24% of people admitted to hospital are suffering from malnutrition. And although this is Scotland in a better position, uh, again, ahead of the rest of the UK, as we are in so many things, and nevertheless, it is, as Joan McAlpine said, a, a, a matter for continuing concern. The Scottish Government report in, uh, in two December 2019 looked at nutrition required by an older person and, and found that it was essentially the same as that of a younger person, but it's important for the diet of the older person to be more micronutrient dense in order to prevent the development of nutrient deficiencies which can exacerbate health problems that may arise in the aging process. And unfortunately, the act of providing a balanced and nutritional diet can become increasingly difficult as people age. And Food Train uh, uh, seeks to address uh, this problem through its, uh, through its program, uh, which I won't go into because Elaine Murray has already uh, covered that and we have had a previous debate on it. But the meal makers, based, I think, on the casserole club, which has been going for some time in England, is certainly something that is, is very worthwhile and allows selfless community volunteers to, who enjoy cooking to assist their older neighbours. And by all accounts, the programme is already a, a success and is, is working well in its uh, two months of operation in Dundee. And Food Train, I gather, intends to try and spread meal makers to other parts of Scotland in the near future. Um, and we've heard the other details about parcel delivery and the rest. Um, there are other examples of delivering services across Scotland that also work with vulnerable people to educate them themselves about preparing and cooking healthy meals. In my own area of Mid-Scotland and Fife has a great example led by Clackmanninshire Healthier Lives. And their work with vulnerable people has been transformational for some of the participants, all of whom are vulnerable people. In addition to that important service, Clack Manager Healthier Lives provides a community food development worker who gives guidance and support to members of the community in relation to food, shopping, budgeting, cooking, and general dietary advice. And it's this sort of development of community spirit and community uh, social asset, which is, I think, really is rewarding for all those who are engaged in it, but does help the more vulnerable members of our community. Um, if, if I can add that they, they, in Stirling, where prepared meals at home provides people who've been referred based on an assessment of, of need, uh, this is a program run by Appetito, which has been in, had positive feedback from its clients since it began in 2012. And there are many other examples across the country, and it would be good to have a mapping exercise which actually did indicate where, where, where all these are. And it may be the government already working on this. We'll hear, hear from the minister uh, in a minute. Uh, uh, presiding officer, in the short time that we have in these debates, uh, I think it's not possible to cover all the issues. And I think we should possibly try to have a debate on nutrition. We are, after all, about to pass a food standards bill. And one of the elements of that is the improvement of the diet for the public. And it's not just about obesity, which, of course, is one of the main public health challenges. But it is about this area of uh, improving, improving nutrition. Can I refer the Minister to another example of social capital assets not unrelated? Um, I, I um, uh, have the good fortune to be the patron of Trellis, which is the umbrella organisation for um, uh, Scotland for therapeutic gardening. 180 projects across the country now, again providing social inclusion, often for people with learning disability and mental health problems. But that includes working in allotments at, uh, uh, and producing food, which is then you know, moved on into cooking and preparing meals and connecting them up in, in, in a better way, I think would be helpful. And I'm glad that Trellis has just been awarded 5,000 pounds to uh, focus on training courses, supporting children with complex needs, introducing them to therapeutic gardening. Another example is uh, after 
I ran a seminar for Trellis in Fife, but Fife Council is now taking gardens of elder people where they're no longer able to manage. Uh, and instead of the council coming in and just doing a basic repair work, they give these on a, on a contract which they mediate to people who want allotments and can't get them. As you draw to they're, now, close, please. they're now growing food and, and growing food which they're sharing with the elderly person, which is the relevance to our debate today. So in conclusion, presiding officer, I realise you're pressing me to finish. I hope that the government will do a mapping exercise. I hope that they will provide time for, uh, for a debate on, full debate on nutrition. And if I could make one final recommendation to the minister, that if she's time over Christmas, because I know she'll be very busy, she might like to read Sir John Elvidge's papers uh, produced under the aegis of the Carnegie Trust called The Enabling State, because it encompasses much that is represented in the debate which Joan McAlpine has successfully got today and for which I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. I now call on the Minister to close the debate on behalf of the Government Minister Maureen Watt. Seven minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to thank Joan McAlpine for raising the motion on meal makers and tackling malnutrition in frail, frail older people and also to the colleagues across the Chamber. Um, for participating. I must say, um, from Dr Murray's contribution, food, food labelling has taken on a new significance. Obviously, proper food labelling has not reached Dr Murray's household, but I would urge her over Christmas to maybe buy some food labels that stick onto um, <laughs> packaging uh, in the freezer. It might help her husband get the correct thing out of the freezer. Um, I'd, as I say, I'd like to thank all members um, who have participated uh, in the debate and the issues uh, they've raised. I, uh, uh, Dr Milne raised the point about uh, WRVS used to go around uh, delivering meals and I remember doing that uh, as a child uh, with my mother who did it for years and years. And things have changed and have moved on. As Dr Simpson will know, that's a local authority uh, decision to go for uh, meals that are microwavable and things and it's up to them of course to look at their priorities but I do think that there's and I would agree with him that there is an opportunity in uh, the health integrated health and social care uh, community planning partnerships and now empowering communities to perhaps think about bringing this back and for example last evening in the parliament the meals in the members restaurant were prepared by school pupils college students and others from Queen Margaret Union and I want I wonder what happens to meals that are prepared in our colleges. Are they perhaps just eaten by the students, but might they want perhaps to uh, deliver them on to those uh, people who need them? So it's right for this Parliament, through this debate, to congratulate the food train for spearheading meal makers, which is already delivering meals and creating community spirit in Dundee by encouraging people to cook and share an extra portion of their home cooked food. And I also welcome it being soon rolled out as Joan McAlpine has said, to six other local authority areas, which the government is supporting uh, this project with £100,000 of funding for two years to match fund the money that Joan McAlpine mentioned the Rank Foundation were putting in. The Meal Makers Programme is an enterprising initiative that will directly tackle undernourishment in older people. By linking up local communities, it will not just bring immediate health ben benefits of a healthy meal and improved nutrition, but it also builds relationships in local neighbourhoods. Its setting up was a result of the work of the Older People's Task Force. Um, uh, the, it was following, as um, Dr Simpson and Dr Murray have mentioned, uh, a study trip that they took to England um, and Scottish Government officials and Community Food and Health Scotland, dietitians, academics and community workers. And they became aware of the Casserole Club in England. Um, and um, it was in quick time that they made a valuable contribution to the issues around food poverty and food access. And it was a result of that that Meal Makers was established developing a heating well logic model as part of Health Scotland's work to create an older people's outcomes framework and getting ministerial backing to organise uh, a malnutrition summit, which is going to take place next year. Uh, perhaps after that, Dr Simpson, it might be uh, a good idea to have the debate that you mentioned on malnutrition. 
The Scottish Government has a focus on improving health and inequalities. Mealmakers aims to improve the health of older people who lack the money, skills or support to adequately provide for themselves. And by focusing on homemade meals as the best option for eating in the home, Mealmakers follows the same principle as the Scottish Government's new social marketing campaign, which is launching in January. The Eat Better, Feel Better campaign aims to improve cooking skills across the population with a specific target of the more deprived areas of the country. The website will have 100 recipes that are simple and affordable in order to encourage people to make homemade meals. I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Older People's Food Task Force and Michelle McCrindle, CEO of Food Train, who plays an active part in all that has been achieved. Malnutrition, as others have said, is a significant public health pro problem, negatively affecting physical health and social well-being. Malnutrition, in particular undernutrition, are important risk factors for older people becoming vulnerable and their independence being compromised. For some older people, a dinner from meal makers may be their only proper meal of the day. Around 1 in 10 people over 65 living in the community are malnourished or at risk of malnutrition. In recent years, malnutrition was found to affect 24% of patients admitted to Scottish hospitals with the proportion of underweight rising steeply over the age of 70 years. Malnourished older people will see their GP twice as often as those who are well nourished, have a threefold risk of hospital admission and their hospital stays will be longer. The direct costs of malnutrition are estimated to range from 5 billion for healthcare services to 13 billion for associated health and social care services. So reducing the number of underweight older people living in the community could have a substantial effect on reducing hospital admissions. A wide range of factors have been identified by older people as preventing them from leading a healthy lifestyle and linked to an increased risk of malnutrition. Affordability of food, difficulties in accessing food shops, decreased mobility, lack of cooking skills, as Sandra White mentioned, and the impact of major life changes and lot of loss of motivation to eat well. We recognise that particular groups of older people may be at risk of not eating well. Older men, older people in remote communities, older people living with dementia and older people from ethnic minority communities. And that's why the government supports initiatives such as Mealmakers and Food Train in providing services for some of the most vulnerable people in our communities. But older people are not solely recipient of services and in many cases are major providers of services, as Nanette Mill recognised. The input that older people provide as volunteers and the opportunities that volunteering provides for increased quality of life is hugely important. The, another area, the other initiative in this area is food train, uh, food train, which I think Joan McAlpine may have spoken about in a previous debate. The Scottish Government has supported food train for many years, and it's a good example of older people contributing to society and third sector involvement. The service um, is currently active in seven local authorities, but the Older People's task, Food Task Force has been engaged in looking at how to gain support to expand the model. So I welcome the motion and do believe that the Meal Makers Project will help overcome some of the social barriers that cause mal malnutrition, including limited transport to local shops, social isolation and poverty. And I wish the food train and make meal makers every success as the project develops. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. And I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30. <laughs>